command or Shimano uh, and we're trying to simulate uh, how the uh, Dongfeng 26D the uh, anti-ship uh, ballistic missile developed by China would be launched against uh, the United States forces or the United States Navy so in this scenario the United States uh, forces are composed of let's switch sides for now because we are China po tayo na side USA side so yung mga forces natin na US is the uh, USS John Stennis a Nimitz class aircraft carrier <coughs> so ito siya no and it is escorted by CG-70 Lake Erie uh, Ticonderoga class na uh, cruiser, missile cruiser then we also have a an Arleigh Burke uh, destroyer, missile destroyer so guided missile destroyer Arleigh Burke class Pink, Pinkney Okay, so they are escorting the John C. Stennis uh, Nimitz class aircraft carrier and they are heading towards the west, no? due west. So a course of around 270 to 69 degrees. <clears throat> so we are in the U.S. side and if you notice, there is a satellite, no? a Chinese satellite, the Yaogan 25A. It is uh, an eland sat, and uh, it's about to pass over the West Philippine Sea or the South China Sea, and I believe um, the U.S. forces have detected it, but they are not responding to it. They think of it as a benign, you know, a usual reconnaissance satellite passing overhead, which they actually do regularly, and then. We're going to switch over back to the Chinese side. So, napapansin ninyo, this is the Yaogan 25A which we are in control right now. Well, not necessarily in control kasi wala naman talaga tayong makakontrol uh, with this satellite. No? Uh, it's basically doing its orbit according to the data here. The altitude right now is at about 1,000 kilometers up and the uh, orbit of speed is it's in knots, but actually, <clears throat> that should be something like uh, 19,000 kilometers per hour or more. Maybe 22,000 kilometers per hour orbiting the Earth. Right now, the simulation is paused. Pero you can see here that the Chinese satellite is now detecting the, uh, the U.S. forces, although hindi precise, meaning these are estimates. And if you want to see a comparison, I will turn on the God mode. And there, these are the actual positions, no? Pero yung nade-detect ng ating Chinese satellite, andito. So, hindi pa masyadong accurate yung estimate niya. But, as this satellite comes closer to this spot, as it will happen right now, we will play this scenario. Ayan, um, it's doing its orbit. Notice na, the um the accuracy of its positioning of the uh, vessels is increasing there i don't know if you notice that um better na yung ano niya yung yung pag ano niya ng ating uh, mga vessels there so all three vessels yung positions nila have been confirmed so we're going to pause the simulation a bit. Kasi may solid may solid ano na tayo eh, positioning. The data from that satellite can be passed on to the mobile launch group which is located here in Inner Mongolia. Of course, we don't really know where the Chinese have set these up. So lima yung linagay ko. Ano lang, theoretical ano lang, mga positions, you know strewn across the Gobi Desert. <laughs> so, 
Directly north of this area is Mongolia. So, ito kasi yung dilemma ngayon. The problem is, wala akong mahanap na satellite. I mean, US or NATO or any allied satellite that is positioned near, near this area. And I think, although wala pa akong confirmation for this theory, <clears throat> I think medyo sensitive information kasi ito. That's why hindi nila in-include dito sa game version ng command or ng Simano. Kasi if you don't know, meron talagang ano eh, professional version tong Simano eh. It's designed for real military analysts for defense agencies around the world. Um, so, meron silang version yan. Uh, it's not for uh, public consumption. In fact, you need a security clearance to use the professional version of Simano no? But I believe yon may mas accurate data sila on the positions of the uh, geosynchronous satellites that monitor this area of China. So, paano yan? How can we simulate an early detection of a launch via something like SBIRS? So, walang, walang usable SBIRS system eh. I tried to implement one here in Simano, pero walang nag-work. So, in lieu of that... Uh, one ano, possible alternative would be like an AWACS. Trinay ko din yun, by the way. Nagtry ako na AWACS ang gamitin. Uh, I mean, US na E3 Sentry or maybe even an SR-71 Blackbird. Yung, ano, yung high altitude, high speed na, you know, the SR-71. Very famous na reconnaissance aircraft ng US. Nagtry ako niyan. Okay, this is what happened when I tried both the E3 Sentry and the SR-71. They can detect the missiles. Unfortunately, the window for detection is really small kasi yung ascent path ng ating missile is ballistic. So it goes into space. So at a certain altitude, both the E3 Sentry and the SR-71, hindi na nila ma, ano, hindi na nila ma follow yung launched missiles or the DF-26Ds. So in lieu of that, ito yung ginawa ko. May isang radar system, balik tayo sa US side. May isang radar system uh, na US-based. Itong F FPS-115 paved pause. So, this is a very uh, high-powered radar system. Think of it as a land-based na ano, parang sa Aegis uh, systems din, yung missile systems. So, OTH siya over the horizon. Ang laki ng reach ng mga radar na to. And imagine, yung mga uh, mobile launch groups nandito lang naman eh. If we measure that right now, mga ano lang, within 100 nautical miles lang tayo nung mga mobile launch groups ng China. So yes, this is actually fake kasi imposibleng mag-aalaw yung China no, ng mga early warning radars dito sa Mongolia. So... Pero as you can see naman, hindi ko naman siya linagay deliberately sa Chinese soil. That would be impossible. Pero what if somehow Western forces manage to sneak these launch sites, secret launch facilities, very near Inner Mongolia? So kasi yung gusto nating isimulate na madedetect ng US satellites yung launch and then they would retaliate right away. So ano yung weapon na gagamitin natin for for ano for shooting down the, the DF26D or attempt to shoot it down none other than yung yung standard weapon ng US yung uh, SM3. So ito yan yung RIM161 SM3 which ang dami kasi niyang possible targets na pwede sa kanya air contact, a guided weapon or a satellite. Meaning it's partially space capable. So this is the only one I can find in the US arsenal na actually can manage to chase the um, ano to, yung Dongfeng 26D as it uh, goes about the, the boost phase. No? Yung, yung launch, yung kaka-launch pa lang. Although may certain delay of course yung radar, pero let's see how it all works kung talaga bang... Hindi ko pa nasusubukan, kaka-install ko lang nito. I, I don't really know how it will react, no? Uh, I mean, kung mag react ba talaga siya sa launch. So, let's go back to the Chinese side. Okay. So, yun na ulit yung limang launch or mobile launch groups 
may launcher yan eh. Okay. So, since ngayon, may positive position, ano na, data yung ating satellite, it's going to pass that information to the mobile launch group. So, I will select all of them. Oop, tapos hindi selected yung, ano na yan, isa. Ito ngayon ang problema kasi I'm using uh, a recorder. I need to uh, put on the recorder first and select all of the... Uh, So, ayan, uh, I've selected all of the uh, the mobile launch groups. Balikan natin yung, ang tatargetin natin of course is the USS John Stennis. Ayan. So, shift F1. Oop, teka, nag-select kasi natin eh. Balikan ulit natin. Shift. Select all. Zoom out. Punta tayo ulit sa West Philippine Sea. Zoom in tayo dito sa carrier group. Then we're going to press shift F1. And target Stennis. So ito na yung we weapons allocation screen. So you have the five uh, mobile launch groups. So nakalagay dito, it's green. Meaning firing is allowed. We have line of sight. Uh, via satellite so all four launchers can fire all of their missiles at the same time so allocate all weapons ayan allocated na so that's ready to fire let's move on to the other launcher allocate all weapons allocate all weapons allocate all weapons allocate all weapons so imagine that's four times five there, there will be 20 DF-26Ds flying to the USS, carry, uh, the USS John Stennis carrier. So, yan yung target natin. So, once I press start, magsisimula na po yung simulation. So, let's go back to the mobile launch group area in Inner Mongolia. So, na, nag-declare na tayo ng hostile. The Nimitz class carrier John C. Stennis is now declared hostile, and now we will start the simulation. So here, here we go. Ito na. We are in real time, and kalilipad palang ng ating mga DF. Uh, what's this? The DF 26Ds. So as you can see, ang ang taas ng altitude, oh. It's already 80,000 feet. It's, it's now Mach 0.4, really fast. That's real time, ah. So if we switch sides to USA, wala pa. Hindi pa yata na de ano, detected na. So everything has been detected, pero wala pang, ano, wala pang, hindi pa nag-react tong mga launch facilities. Let's, let's do it manually. Let's try to see if kayang, kaya natin i-attack tong, Mm -hmm. parang hindi talaga kaya see hindi kayang i-attack look look at that automatic fire is not possible weapon is unable to engage in precise target so mahirap sobrang bilis hindi kaya ng SM3 unfortunately so eto ang ano issue this is the boost phase of the Dongfeng 26D pero nakikita niyo naman sa sobrang bilis ng ascent and maybe i can i can try and show you how fast that is using orbiter space flight simulator i have another simulation for rockets yun mas visual yun eto kasi parang mapa lang yung tinatanaw natin kaya hindi niyo makita hindi niyo ma-appreciate kung gaano kabilis mag ano to mag uh, boost into space etong Dongfeng 26D so, we're still in the US side and tingnan nyo, minomonitor noong mga uh, paved paws yung mga missiles. And now we're going to switch over to the Chinese side. China. So, ayan. The 20 missiles are on their way. 
may ginawa ba yung ano? May nag-react ba at all? Yung US forces? Actually, yeah. Kasi may ano na eh. Uh, alam nila eh. As of this point in time, the US forces are aware that 20 DF-26Ds are headed this way. And possibly targeting, of course, the carrier. And as you can see, all of the defense systems of the three vessels have been turned on. So, maybe your next question is, bakit wala silang ginagawa? Why can't they fire? Number one, um, right now, if we look back at, the, uh, at our missiles, if you want to know their positions, sana ba yan? Sige, bilisan natin ng konti. Pero, just to give you an idea. They are now still well above the atmosphere at 250 kilometers above the Earth at Mach 11. Imagine that. That's over 7,500 7, knots or over 9,000 kilometers per hour. So, kahit na anong weapon pang i-bring to bear siguro dito, unless merong some kind of ICBM system yung, uh, ano, I'm sorry, not ICBM, but a kind of ballistic missile na designed talaga for this kind of interception. Maybe meron naman, uh, which I'm not aware of, pero I mean, it's almost impossible. Mach 11, and it's now reaching its so-called apogee, nung parabolic arc. Uh, ballistic ano, suborbital path ito eh. uh, the missiles will only take around 15 to 17 minutes to fly and then re-enter the earth's atmosphere actually dito ako bilib sa mga missiles na to they are re-entering the earth's atmosphere at something like Mach 9 and I believe they are thermally protected kasi supposedly sa sobrang init nyan Sasabog sila, no? Pero they actually survive re-entry. And ito na, dapat re-entry phase na tayo. I don't know what's going on. Bakit hindi pa na-update yung data natin. But as you can see, the altitude is, the altitude values are going down, meaning it's now descending back to Earth. So ano ginagawa ng US forces? They still, they still are jamming. And the, they of course are preparing the their defense uh, systems, yung primarily, I believe, yung SM-3 and SM-6 then na on board their, the uh, escort ships. So look, uh, nakikita nyo, uh, 200 kilometers na lang ang altitude. Wow, nag-increase pa yung ating speed, naging Mach 12 kasi nagda-dive eh. Pero as it gets into thicker atmosphere, when it reaches 100 kilometers, uh, mapapansin natin na babagal na dapat yung ano yung uh, yung airspeed yung velocity ng missiles because the atmosphere itself is causing friction no eto na if you notice bumababa na yung ano natin yung speed but that's still a very terrifying speed kaya alam nyo you'll be very disappointed by this um, demo kasi inevitable na na talagang tatama ito. I mean, 20 missiles against just 3 vessels. And yung SM-3 ng ating, uh, what's this, ng ating uh, mga escort vessels, hindi yata enough eh, yung number. So, I will re reiterate what I've been saying in the, uh, in my earlier post na, as long as maraming escorts that have these, ano, anti-missile systems, I think, Maano na naman, ma-protect ma naman na uh, yung ating mga ano mga ships. The problem kasi is um pag hindi enough yung vessels, talagang yung inventory or yung ano ordnance load ng mga ships, yun lang yung limitation. Meaning if if those missiles run out, talagang hindi nila masa-stop, right? Ano <laughs> kahit na anong gawin nila, they cannot stop the the incoming missiles. Let's switch over to the US side and see if na-detect na ba. Yes, na-detect na. So, yan, yung vampire, meaning, uh, na-detect na nila yung isang incoming. So, the... nag-launch na yung ating Ticonderoga ng isang SM, 
what did it launch? An SM3. So, ito na. Detected na lahat yung mga missiles. They're incoming. And, of course, they're being greeted by the SM3s. Pero, note, I'm going to pause the simulation at this point kasi I'm going to measure the distance, huh? because this is important. Right now, the distance between the missiles and the carrier group is 160, uh, about 100 nautical miles. So this is the window of opportunity for the SM-3, uh, 100 nautical miles. Because if, if the missiles are closer than 50 nautical miles, problema na. Uh, there will be not enough time and not enough... Um, I don't know what you call it, uh, not enough yeah, time for the anti-missiles to actually get a lock. Because, check ulit natin yung speed. The speed of these missiles, each is still Mach 8. Imagine that, Mach 8. And they're hurtling down from a very steep angle down to the fleet or to that, to that carrier group. So let's play. Ito yung bug pa rin na hindi ko maintindihan. Maybe just because talagang for some reason, hindi talaga nagpa-fire yung RLA Burke. No? Maybe it feels na talaga. Let's try to figure this out. I'm going to uh, f fire manually. So, yan. So, para lang ma-explain sa inyo kasi alam ko yung iba dyan magre-reklamo. Bakit ayaw mag-fire ng RLA Burke? Ito yon. Yung kanyang RIM 162A ESSM target speed is 5,490 5, uh, 5, knots much higher than the weapon's maximum target speed. So even though intercept ito, there is a chance na because of the very high uh, what's this closing distance yung closure rate uh, when, when the two missiles uh, encounter each other Parang hindi, hindi siya makaka hindi siya makaka ano makaka lock on or hindi niya mata track properly. And that is why helpless yung Arley Burke. Kasi kanina mas malakas siguro yung radar ng Ticonderoga, yung Lake Erie. Kaya it managed to get a lock on some of the missiles kaya it was able to fire its SM3s. Pero wala talagang ginawa yung Arley Burke. When in fact, all of its sensors are active. So, it should have been able to do that, no? Pero talagang in this particular scenario, ayaw niya mag-fire. So, let's resume the simulation. Ayan. So, may mga shoot down na. That's two. So, two of the 20 missiles have been shot down. Let's see kung ilan pa yung... Wow. Wow, mukhang magiging successful yung ano, barrage ngayon. Ah. Well, that's the problem. Sige, stop ko muna ha. I believe at this point we are... Ano kayong distance natin? Ayun na. We are within 50 nautical miles. Ito na yung problem point makaka problema na yung SM3 to get a lock. So even though there are still several SM3s headed uh, the way of these missiles, ewan ko lang kung anong ano. How many missiles are left? Remember, even though there are only uh, six missiles, it only takes one missile to knock out a carrier. Ganong kalakas itong ating uh, ano to? Uh, Dongfeng 26D. So what do you think? Tatama? There. Overshot its target. The the difference I think in closure uh, I mean the closure rate between the two uh, is enough that it will break lock or it will simply you know to simply miss. Hindi niya kayang iano i track at that close a range. So I think you know the story here. Ito yung ating John Stennis. 
And parating na po yung ating mga uh, what's this? Mga missiles. Oh, even at this point, even if we wanted to fire shift F1, try to fire any defense systems, wala. Nothing can fire. No defense systems can fire against these uh, weapons. I mean from the RLA Burke. What about from the Lake Erie? May time pa ba? Can we still use any of its weapons? Wala. Ayun, meron. The ERAM Allocate all weapons. Try natin. Sige. Ayan, pwede. Tumira yung ERAM. Pero let's see what it will do. Kung matatrack ba talaga niya. Ang galing ng intercept path niya, oh. Talagang, kasi alam niyo, papunta sa carrier, eh. Pero, ah, uh, yan. It's going haywire. Ayun, may tinamaan. Isa. That was great. Ooh, dalawa. But there's still four, unfortunately. Remember, lahat, finire ko na, ha? There we go, and minor damage, but <laughs> yung first strike, parang near miss, kaya hindi, hindi tinamaan masyado yung, ano, hindi na damage yung ating carrier. But of course, the second impact was major. It was a massive explosion on deck. Imagine nyo na lang, kasi yung si Mano, hindi naman siya graphical. You can imagine the extent of the damage done by the uh, DF-26D. Sige, continue lang natin yung scenario. Let's see. Kasi supposedly, yung DF-26D, meron din capability to actually do a reacquisition or retargeting. Meaning, if the target vessel has been destroyed, if its vector or flight path still allows it to steer to a new target, it will do that. So, it will attempt. Pero at this speed, I doubt it. Kasi yung speed ngayon is still Mach 4. At that speed, tapos kung padive siya, malabo nang maliko niya properly, yung kanyang, kasi may fins yan eh, yung third stage, which is the warhead stage of the DF-26, may ano talaga, may capability sanang lumiko. Pero tingnan natin, ayun, lumiliko na siya. Pero, wala. Naubusan siya ng uh, room to maneuver. Nahulog siya sa dagat. Pero, of course, eto na. The, uh, the John C. Stennis aircraft carrier is sinking. It's actually still afloat. In fact, uh, it's still moving at around 20 knots. Pero talaga major damage na siya. As you can see, there's a fire on board. Wala pa namang flooding. Pero considered na siya as sinking. Meaning, it's, an, it's, a, it's knocked out. So, if we go to damage control, siguro, there's a more detailed damage control ano dito, eh, window. Eh. Let's see. Damage control. Ayan. Everything you see that's red is destroyed. So meaning, as a vessel, it's totally useless na. Uh, nagkataon na hindi natin linagyan ng aircraft yung vessel, pero I would think na all aircraft on this vessel, if it had any, would have been destroyed. So that's it. Again, I, uh, apologies na hindi natin masimulate. <laughs> Look at that. But yung mga, ano, yung mga SM6 na linaunch against the uh, the missiles wala pa rin uh, lumilipad pa rin pero wala na silang target supposedly may auto self destruct ito eh kasi this could be potentially deadly to you know civilians yung collateral damage anyway that's it for this scenario i hope kahit na ba hindi siya ganun ka accurate it's a good demonstration of the capabilities of the dongfeng 26d and it's remarkable and incredible ability to to reach space then re-enter from space and strike a target from over 2,500 nautical miles away so, ang laki ng range niya no? so kahit na linagyan pa natin ng isang defense system very close to it uh, the time frame wasn't enough for those defense um, systems to actually fire and render our uh, our anti-ship missiles uh, uh, destroyed no? or uh, incapacitated wala uh, that's it so this is uh, command modern uh, command modern air naval operations or simano a demo of the dongfeng 226d against the uh, us forces in the south china sea or the west philippine sea